calm facts during turbulent times. That's our priority at Smarter News. And we have a lot of stories with many undercurrents percolating around the country. And I wanna to get to a few of them. You have to pardon my voice and the fact that I'm in bed. I had some sick kids over the last week and I think unfortunately I actually got what they got. They tested negative for COVID. It's a whole thing now. If your kid has a runny nose, it's a whole thing. But unfortunately, as any mom out there knows, after about 10 days of sleepless nights and trying to administer medicine to kids, this is usually what happens. So, but I couldn't, I could not talk to you today because we have so many big stories. And one of them is the hurricane that's really bearing down on the Texas coast. Um, a tropical storm becomes a hurricane when wind speed reaches a certain level. And so when you start hearing on the news, you know, category one, category two, category three, that's all has to do with wind speed. But the winds are not the most dangerous part of a hurricane, it's the water. It's the flooding that comes either during the hurricane or after. And I say this generally because I always think it's an important reminder as we're heading into what is anticipated to be a really big storm. By the way, huge swath of the country is gonna be affected by this weather. It's gonna travel from Texas all the way up to Ohio. So expect this to be a big story over the next several days and of course when we're watching as well. There is a concern about how it impacts COVID-19 in America. Not only impacts people moving around or having to shelter together, but also how it impacts testing, how it impacts test results, so we should watch that. We don't know what sort of a challenge it'll be, but it's something that we should be aware of. In the meantime, we are seeing rates go down for COVID-19 in America. What's that all about? Here's a word to the wise, just a little bit of a hint. There are those, I'm already seeing news stories that are attributing the decline to mask wearing policies. Whatever side of the mask wearing debate you are on, this is a critical thing to know. The problem with actually a causation saying masks are causing a decline in infection rates is that we can't actually do that based on the science. There can be an association that certain mask wearing policies went into place. And at the same time, we started to see infection rates drop. But a cause and effect, we can't go that far. And the reason is, is because we cannot measure mask compliance. We don't know what type of mask you're wearing, when you're wearing it, how you're wearing it, how much you're washing it. I read a quote just the other week that said, you should be washing your mask as often as you wash your underwear. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that's horrible, but it's something that you should know about. So this is the obstacle. This is, this is really critical to know as we continue to watch this story develop. Just know that about masks. Again, whatever side you're, you're, you're on on that. One of the reasons why mask wearing policies went into effect was not necessarily because of the science. It was one tool that policymakers wanted to use that could hopefully give us the best opportunity to resume normal life. So I think sometimes we get into these sort of uh, extremes, you know, like mask wearing should keep you completely safe or not wearing mask keeps you completely vulnerable. But the reality is we actually don't really know. And we're trying out a bunch of different stuff. <laughs> and this is the social experiment that we're living through. So just want to have a heads up about that. The other big story in America, of course, is what's happening in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Last week, no one was talking about Kenosha. And it's important to know where it is. It's between uh, Milwaukee in Wisconsin and Chicago in Illinois. Right on Lake Michigan, beautiful place. 100,000 people in that city. And as you have likely know already, there was a black man who was shot by white police officers on Sunday evening. The who, what, where, when, how, very basics of this story are still coming together. We see a portion of the incident on video, but we don't know a lot of the details. This is one of the reasons why I direct you back to our website if you're visiting us on social media. I want this to be super convenient for you and I'm on social media all the time. So I wanna give you a smattering of different news topics. But when I'm directing you back to the website, it's not because of clicks. You know, I'm not trying to do something cute. <laughs> I'm actually trying to lead you back to where we're trying to follow a developing story. In what we do on Smarter News, it's very, very basic. Smattering of different stories you should know about, very clearly facts bullet pointed, and then the primary sources. So 
If you actually want a little bit more than just an appetizer, you have a clear way to access the primary source, whatever that is. So if you'll see on this story out of Kenosha, we have both the police association stand, um, statement and the governor's statement. We also have links to local news. We have links to videos. We're, we're constantly keeping it updated because I want you to have access. I know at times, we don't see a lot of nonpartisan news organizations, and that's my promise to you. That's my commitment to you. But there's not a lot of places to compare us to because, unfortunately, a lot of the big news organizations are pandering to certain points of view as a way to grow their audience. I am refusing to do that, and we are charting a new course. I appreciate your feedback so much on, on this journey, and I love the fact that we have such a diversity of opinion, and you all are finding a home here. It's really special and unique. I just want you to realize that. But in these stories, you know, the story out of Kenosha is not just about what happened in Kenosha. There is a bigger story happening in America as well about race and violence, what's happening in American cities, what's happening with policing. These are really big, hefty themes that also have to be explored. And that's one of the reasons why we selected the mother of Jacob Blake, the man who was shot by police, to, to, to share that with you, her full statement. And I want to talk to you about that because what she said really brought everybody in. It wasn't just the story about her son. It was about the story of America. And I haven't seen a statement like that ad-libbed on television in a really long time. I wanted you to see it in full. And here's what I want you to think about. There were a lot of other people that have spoken out from Jacob Blake's family. I want you to look at the news when you can today and see how many news sites are picking and choosing who to share with you and how many news sites are actually playing statements in full. Because I think that will tell you something about how the news sites are trying to deliver this story. I really felt it was important for you to see this in full. I thought it was critical because she did something very important in journalism. She covered the details of what was personal to her and she also hit on these larger points. Really quickly, a lot of you have asked about crime overall in American cities and I just wanna equip you with this one quick fact. Largely, crime statistics are voluntarily reported from police departments. So I don't, ha I have a database I can access, but I don't know how current it is or complete. It's one of the challenges that was trying to be tackled in criminal justice legislation that was going through the House and the Senate after um, the death of George Floyd in police custody. It hasn't gone anywhere yet, but that's one of the reasons. So you are going to hear, especially as we get closer to November, about how dangerous U.S. cities are or how maybe they're not compared to last year at the same time. And the reality is there's enough statistics out there that both sides have something to pull to share with you. It's difficult, that's a challenge. We are constantly looking into that topic and we, we feel closer to where we can give you a picture of what's happening in America, but we still feel limited somewhat by it. So I wanted you to know that. It's really important to also be clear when we're limited at the resources that can actually fully report out a story. And it's interesting what resources those are. So just wanted to close with that. Please visit our website. It's always a work in progress. I'm constantly tinkering around it, but the sources are there and I want you to have access to it. I love that you have different opinions. I love that you have found a home here. I often think of America as like a big Thanksgiving table. You know when you think, sit down for Thanksgiving and then suddenly you look up and look around and think, how did I get here with all these people? <laughs> I know it sort of feels like that sometimes. Like, how did we all wind up in this place? Well, we did. And it's remarkable. And what we're creating in Smarter News is remarkable as well. It's a solution in news, prioritizing the facts out of respect for you, for the story, for the community and the people that are impacted, and respect for the facts because facts are important. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to rest up. <laughs> to sound better because I have a big overview of the RNC that I want to give you on Friday. And I can't sound like this. So I'll keep you posted. In the meantime, stay safe. Look forward to hearing from you. And thanks for being here.